Is your glam makeup looking too cakey, too ashy, too harsh? Or actually is it coming out looking too natural and flat? Have you been wondering what steps you've been missing or what's actually the secret to achieving that flawless airbrushed soft matte glowing brown skin glam? Honey, rejoice and look no further because I am here to help. My name is Keo by KKB and I'm an expert makeup educator and professional MUA for over 10 years. I'm here to help you elevate your makeup skills. Watch this very detailed step-by-step -step beginner friendly brown skin makeup tutorial made just for you. Women of color, let's dive right into it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You already know before we get started, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and like, subscribe and hit the bell button because honeys, I have all these makeup tutorials coming for you. These beauty tips, these hacks, free game on how to make money in the beauty industry. Come on now, subscribe, but let's get right into it for real. So honeys, I'm going to start with her eyebrows. And if you guys don't know by now, eyebrows are so important. They're actually one of the most important parts of makeup because your eyebrows frame your face and can literally make or break your makeup look. So our beautiful Kenyan model has tinted brows. They look wonderful. However, I'm going for a very soft brow look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some NARS foundation and I'm just going to get some on a brush and I'm going to pat it onto the front of her brow. What this is going to do is soften the brow and it is also going to lighten the area, which is going to allow me to go ahead and create hair-like strokes. So before I do that, I'm going to go in with the Artist Essential Powder Palette and I'm going to grab a powder and I'm going to pat it onto the front of the brow to set it so that the eyebrow product doesn't move around. Then I'm going in with an eyebrow pen, not a pencil guys, a pen. And what this is doing, it's creating eyebrow strokes. So this takes a bit of practice, but it is absolutely worth it. So the best way to do this is to point your brush directly onto the brow, as if you're writing with a pen, and you're just creating eyebrow flicks upward. So you're creating flicking motions upward, but you wanna do this gently. You don't wanna press too hard, you wanna be very light with your brush. So another tip here that's important for creating hair-like strokes is that you don't want to create straight lines going right through the brow, okay? You want to create brush strokes along the bottom end of the brow. So for example, you see me putting flicks towards the bottom region of her brow. So the front of the row, but towards the bottom region. And then when you're done creating enough strokes towards the bottom region of the brow, you're gonna to go to the top of the brow and create eyebrow strokes towards the top. So you're going from the middle of the brow to the top of the brow. I'm not going straight through the brow with one long hair stroke. Cause guess what guys, that will look too false and it just won't look as nice, okay? So give me a half a stroke from the end of the brow to the middle of the brow and then give me another half a stroke from the middle of the brow to the top of the brow. I hope that's making sense. So next we're gonna move on by using some concealer and I'm just gonna clean up below the arch of the brow. So an easy way to do this is to grab an angle brush and to ensure that the end of the angle brush, the shorter end, is facing towards the tail of the brow, okay? And what you want to do is you're going to drag the concealer under the brow. However, you want to create tiny strokes instead of a straight line that, so it makes your life easier. And also, you want to ensure that you're pulling that concealer down so that it's easy to blend below the brow when you're done and so that it easily blends into the eyeshadow base. Next, I'm just blending out the concealer hair, going back and forth with a fluffy brush. Next, I'm gonna go in with this Milani concealer and I'm gonna use it as an eyeshadow base. And the reason why I like to use it as an eyeshadow base is because it goes on creamy all over the lid, then it dries matte. Next, my honeys, I'm going in with the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette and I use the color chip and I'm just going back and forth in the crease area, but I'm also creating gentle, tiny circles, right? Right within the crease area and I'm bringing the color upwards a bit. Now, when you're blending eyeshadow, it's important to be gentle with your brush. Do not press in too hard. Be gentle, let the brush do the work and eventually you'll see the colors start to blend nicely, so be patient. Now, I'm going in with some black towards the ends of the eye to create this beautiful dimension. Now, here's a major key. When it comes on to dark brown complexions, right, you need darker colors to add more dimension so that the makeup doesn't look flat and one dimensional. This is really what's going to help you to achieve that superstar glam. Guys, when you're doing makeup, you don't have to sit there and struggle to get lines sharp on your own. Just use a tool. 
I got this tool on Amazon. I put it towards the end of the eye and it helps me to get the eyeshadow sharp at the ends. Yeah, so I blended out that black eyeshadow, right? And I do this by patting and by making very tiny circles with the brush. Next, I'm gonna go in with the gold eyeshadow and the way you're gonna get the most color peeled is by, oh, okay then, is applying. <laughs> is you're gonna drag the eyeshadow down you're gonna drag the eyeshadow down on the lid that's gonna make the eyeshadow pop and look really shimmery and pigmented next i'm gonna hold my eyeliner pen along the lash line right and i'm just gonna draw a line and when i get to the end of the eye i create a wing but i use my eye tool hold it against the eye and draw a line on top of it gently to create a wing it's so easy this way definitely go and try that tool on amazon it's my favorite little tool Okay, so because I'm going for a clean makeup look, okay, everything needs to be polished. I'm just cleaning up above the brows with using foundation on my angled brush. And I just get close to the eyebrow and take my time and drag and stop, but drag and stop, right? Until I have cleaned up the top of the brow. Here I am using another one of my favorite makeup tools, my finger, and I'm just rubbing away the excess foundation above the brows and in between the eyebrows to clean it up, okay? All right, so I popped on a lash and I'm just combing through the brows with the Refi Brow Gel to give the brow hairs more definition. So that, my honeys, was eyes and eyeshadow. I hope you guys loved it. Ooh, keep watching because now we're going on to skin. This is where it all happened. So guys, I'm doing skin prep. Don't be overwhelmed if you're new to this. Long story short, you need to cleanse your skin and hydrate your skin properly before you put makeup on it so that the makeup can take to the skin nicely so that the skin doesn't look dry or cakey and because my model has combination skin i'm going in with some milk and magnesia in the t-zone it's a controversial step listen up and listen up good if you have oily or combination skin and you need something to actually work to suck up the oil throughout the day it's going to be milk and magnesia i haven't found anything else that works so well okay so i just apply my moisturizer first so that it doesn't make the face too dry then i apply it on top of the moisturizer just in the t-zone area where they need it try it that way and before you even work on top of it make sure that it dries on the skin first cool try it and let me know if you haven't used it before the only thing i have to tell you about the milk and magnesia is honey don't be dirty okay do not sleep in the makeup wash it off and cleanse your pores properly wash your face twice so that the milk of magnesia does not clog your pores okay once you do that you'll be fine and try not to do it too often as well okay my honeys so now i'm gonna mix nars foundation in shade nambia with nars foundation new caledonia to get a shade that matches her skin a bit more and i'm just moving it around the face and then i use my brush from real techniques and i pat it in always pat never drag okay major key next i'm going in with this Too faced concealer in chestnut now i'm just going to place the concealer in the areas that i wish to highlight okay so you can just follow this guide here next i'm just going to go in to brighten up the under eyes even more to create more dimension we spoke about this earlier okay now it's time to bronze sculpt and snatch the face and i'm going to do this by using the Kale Beauty Sun Sculpt Bronzing Sticks. These are the newest product on the market and they are bomb.com. They're made specifically for women of color and they're so amazing. They're creamy, long wearing, highly pigmented, easy to blend. And the colors are right. No more ashiness, no more gray, no more muddiness. This is it. Okay, guys. So go and check this out. Purchase it now. So what I'm doing here, I'm just placing the bronzing stick in the areas that I wish to contour and to bronze. So that's the forehead, the cheekbones, and the chin. So the technique I use here is I use two different shades. I use the darker shade on the outer regions of the face. And for the nose, I go in with a lighter shade of the Sunscot bronzing sticks, okay? Just a few tips here for contouring. Do not apply too much contour on your forehead if you have a small forehead or if you're wearing a frontal that's low. Also, when you're contouring your cheekbones, apply the contour on the cheekbone itself to give the face a soft, lifted, feminine look, okay? So three simple steps for contouring is to apply the contour, then to soften out the line, and then to blend the transition color. That's the color in between the light and the dark. So what I'm doing now is softening out that contour color. And how you do that, you just take a synthetic brush and you pat against where the contour ends okay so not directly in the center of the contour but where the line is ending you want to pat against it pat against it pat against it until you don't see any more harsh contour lines just like i'm doing with the model right now 
So now to blend the nose contour, I have to blend back and forth and I bring the contour onto the eyelid for a seamless blend. Honey's is 2023 and we are using liquid blush. So this is a liquid blush from Kill Beauty that's unreleased, coming soon, stay tuned. Also, I forgot to tell you guys, the brow pen is also from Kill Beauty. So this is another one of my techniques where I apply liquid blush and use it as a transition to blend the contour and the highlights. So what we're doing is we're just patting against the blush and also we're blending back and forth slightly from the highlight region into the contour region for more of a seamless blend. Honeys, if you're blending and you feel like there's too much product in your brush, just take a paper and just wipe off the excess product, okay? So now we're going on to the forehead and we're blending out where the highlight stops, that region there, we're just blend, patting against it to blend the transition between the dark and the light, okay? Okay, so now I'm just patting down the nose to soften out that highlight line on the nose and I'm grabbing a clean brush to blend out the under eye highlight. Okay, so I'm just patting all around this region here. So honey, you know I'm going for a polished look, right? So I'm going to go in and just pat some foundation under her cheekbone just to define the cheekbone even more. Then I'm going to ensure that the under eye area doesn't have any creases because it's time to go and set with powder. So I'm just going in and I'm just using some Care Beauty Set and Bake Powder in the color Custard to set her T-zone area. So I'm just gently patting with the powder. Don't press too hard. I'm just patting it gently. Actually, I'm just placing it gently on, on top of the skin, okay? Place it, not pat. Right, so now that I've placed the powder, now I'm brushing it off and I'm patting the powder in at the edges of where the baking is ending and also I'm patting it around the mouth, around the chin. Guys, we don't want the air to look wet and mucky, ew. Now I'm going in with the Artist Essential Powder Palette. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Should I tell y'all? No, it's a secret. I'm not going to tell y'all. I'm not going to tell y'all. But yeah, I'm just setting her contour regions with Artist Essential Powder Palette. I want to tell y'all the secret, but I don't know if y'all testing my loyalty or something like are you guys subscribing for real? Are you guys like sharing this with your friends? If you are, then I'll tell you a secret. So guys, now I'm baking with the Kill Beauty Bake and Set Nutmeg Powder. As you can see, we have so many shades. Um, we're very inclusive over by Kill Beauty. And I'm just getting some of the Nutmeg Powder on a powder puff and I'm just patting it onto the face. I'm doing a little baking here. After I'm done doing that, applying it in the T-zone, I'm gonna grab a darker shade of the Care Beauty Set and Bake Powder. This one is Cocoa. And I'm going under the cheekbones. Now this one, if you're a beginner, skip this step because it can come out a hot mess. I'm not even gonna lie to you. So honey's already told you I love dimension. I'm going back in with Custard, which is a lighter bacon set powder under her eyes. So honey, stay with me because we're almost done. I'm going in with the Sephora eye pencil and I'm just blending it out with a small pencil brush, okay? Next, I'm going in with the Kill Beauty Cocoa Bean Lip Liner and I'm just using it to line her lips. It's my favorite lip liner. It's in every one of my handbags, okay? You need to get this. And next I'm going in with the Care Beauty Sexy Lipstick Melt. It's called Make Your Ex Cry. <laughs> this is honestly the only nude lip I use for my dark skin babes because I'm a creature of habit and it looks so great on, on dark skin babes. So now I'm going in with the Care Beauty Bar Blush Palette. I don't care how dark you are, how what your skin tone is, I'ma put blush on you, okay? So I get it right on the highest point of the cheekbone. And of course, it's finish up time so I'm brushing off the setting powder everywhere all around the face so to add more vibrancy and dimension to the face I am just applying this purple toned blush it's called black the berry from the barb blush palette okay so I'm going in with the K Beauty highlighter palette and I'm just getting some highlighter down the nose as per usual I'm getting some in the front of the eyes and I'm just using this gold glitter because I'm extra and I'm just making a line under the eyes um, towards the front of the eye and I'm just going in with the Morphe spray. I don't really know why I did that. That was gross. And here's a new black owned setting spray that I like. It makes your makeup stay on all day. You can try it. Let me know what you think. It's called So Pro. Seal it. Okay, now I'm going in with my lash primer. Y'all already know I love this lash primer. It thickens the lash. And I go in with my mascara. And we are done. And if you love this tutorial, please just go ahead and subscribe. Like, share with your friends, honey. And if you have any requests, comment below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. See you soon. One step forward, two steps backwards, yeah. Immature lover who don't use big words, yeah. I don't need commenting at all because I know what I want. Oh
Thank you.